Hello, welcome back to Retro Break. So about 10 years ago, I did a video called my top 15 DS games, and it fast became my most popular video ever on the channel, and I've been wanting to do a follow-up to that for a long time. Well, the time has finally arrived. I managed to get myself a capture card for the DS, so this time I can tell you all my 15 favorite DS games and actually show you footage from the games as well. So the original video I haven't actually seen since I uploaded it 10 years ago, so I've come up with a new list of 15 DS games and it will be really interesting to see how many of the games that I've picked now match up with the games that I picked back then. And bear in mind when I did that video before the DS was still going strong, whereas these days of course there's been many more games for the DS since then. As you can see I've built up a really nice collection of DS games and I just love the system so much so I can't wait to tell you guys some of my favourite picks. So a comment I got a lot in the original video was, why have you got so many games? Why don't you use an R4 card or an M3 card? Well, I do have one. So I did actually play a lot of DS games just using this card back in the day. Because obviously when I was at school, I couldn't afford to go out and buy all of these amazing DS games that I wanted to play. Not that I'm condoning piracy or anything, I'm just saying that's what I did. When I got a job a few years later during college, I went back and bought all of the games that I had enjoyed playing on this. So now I have a fantastic range of games and I've got 15 of my all-time favourites that I'm going to show you in this episode. So let's get started with the top one here, number 15, which is Solar to Robo. So when I did my original video, this game hadn't even been released. This one was actually released in 2010, which is when I was at university, and I was so excited to get this game. Of course, before that, there was a game called Tail Concerto for the PlayStation 1, and the developer had wanted to make a sequel to this game for 10 years before he got the chance to finally make his dream come true on the DS. And you can tell that this game is a passion project from a really talented developer. The graphics are some of the best that I've seen on the entire system. The game itself is really fun. It has a very anime style aesthetic, which I absolutely love. I love the main character. In fact, I loved the characters so much that I actually ended up drawing one of the characters and it was one of the first times that I'd ever put a proper amount of effort into drawing. So I'll actually see if I can find that original sketch and show you all because I was really proud of it back then. And the game itself is still one of my favourite games today and I haven't actually played it yet but I would love to play the original at some point as well. Just like the DS game it looks really nice, really interesting, but unfortunately it's only in Japanese so we'd have to go through it with a guide at some point. But the DS one of course is in full English and it looks and sounds amazing. It's kind of a mix of an adventure game mixed with an RPG, mixed with a beat em up and a mech game so there's loads to love here. Really really great game, highly recommend it. Now, number 14 here, and this one's a bit of an interesting pick because this game was made by EA, a company that a lot of people really don't like, but I really like this game. This is Henry Hatsworth in The Puzzling Adventure. And this is a game of two parts. It uses the DS's top and bottom screen in a really interesting way. So basically, on the top screen, it's a really fun 2D pixel-based platformer where you play as this British adventurer here called Henry Hatsworth. And even that alone would make it a great game. But what makes this game so unique is the fact that on the bottom screen, it kind of gives the hint away on the front cover here, on the bottom screen, it's actually got a separate puzzle mode in the main game itself. So you might be running across the stage, fighting some bad guys, you'll end up killing the bad guys and they will transfer down onto the bottom screen and then you can press a button to flip from the platforming game into the puzzle game and then you have to clear the blocks out in a sort of panel de pond style mini game and you get power ups and weapons that you can swap back onto the top screen and carry on playing the platformer. It's a really interesting mechanic and I don't think it could have been done nearly as well on anything other than the DS so that's why I have to include this game in my top 15. Now if you've been following my channel this year there'll be one game series that you know I love a whole lot not Super Monkey Ball, another game series. Of course, I'm talking about Trackmania. If you haven't seen my Trackmania video, I highly recommend you going and checking it out because I put a lot of time and effort into it and I'm really happy with the results. But even so, the DS has an amazing version of Trackmania. In fact, 
In fact, it has two amazing versions. And if you want to hear more about these, definitely go and check out my video. But for my number 13 pick, I actually picked the sequel, which is another game that wasn't actually released when I did my original video, so I didn't even know this game existed at the time. This is Trackmania Turbo, and it takes everything that was good about the original game. This is actually one of the very first games that I ever did a video on way back in about 2008, and I absolutely loved it back then, and I love the sequel even more. It took everything that was good about the original, as well as a load of cars and tracks from Sunrise and United, which are my two favorite Trackmania games. So to have all of that on the go on the DS is just fantastic. It looks and controls really well. And of course, I love the way they use the touchscreen to let you create your own tracks which is a huge selling point of this series and I absolutely love what they managed to do on the DS and the Wii game is really good as well if you've got a Wii. Number 12 now and this is a really interesting one. So there was a few different Kirby games on the DS, in fact Kirby had a great run on the system and I really wanted to include all of them but I had to narrow it down to just one game from the series and the one that I picked is the last game that came out on the system, this is Kirby's Mass Attack. And a really interesting fact about this game that I think is true, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but this game, Kirby's Mass Attack, was Nintendo's last ever 2D pixel art game. And it just really shines on the DS. The graphics in this game are outstanding. And the fact that there's so many different Kirby's, like the title suggests, Mass Attack, you basically control up to 10 Kirby's at once using the touchscreen and you go around various different levels and you solve kind of Pikmin style puzzles I suppose. You can flick the Kirby's, you can latch them onto enemies, use them to pull things. It's just a really interesting and unique game and that is what the Kirby series does so well that you can really see that they were just experimenting with everything they had to offer with this game here. And once again, this one actually came out in 2011, so it's a really late release for the DS, and you can tell they'd had a long time to get used to the hardware. And it's definitely my favourite Kirby game for the DS, just because of how unique it is. Really recommend this one. Really, really fun. Number 11, and I think I included this in my original video, there are three different... Well, technically there's four different Sonic games, but one of them's an RPG that doesn't really count as a classic Sonic game. That one's called Sonic Chronicles, I think. Just like Kirby, I could only pick one from the series, and the one I've decided to pick is the first game they released on the DS called Sonic Rush. There's so much to love about this game. This game was made by Dimps, the same team that made the Sonic Advance series, which I absolutely love. And they took everything they'd learnt about making those Sonic games for the GBA and just upped it to 11 for the DS. It's so much faster, the levels are so much more interesting, it's got really nice graphics, the music is outstanding. No Sonic game has lived up to the amazing soundtrack that this game has. It's just so fast, so fun, definitely one of my favourite Sonic games of all time, let alone on the DS. Of course it also includes Blaze. This wasn't Blaze's first game, Blaze's first game was the much hated Sonic 06, which I personally quite enjoyed back at college, but I don't know if that's just because I was on a Sonic binge back then and I would have loved anything to do with the Blue Hedgehog. But Sonic Rush is a genuinely good game. I really recommend it. And of course I recommend the sequel as well, but I don't think it's as good as the original. It's number 10. I had to do that in the style of Screw Attack and I wish I could use the voice from Screw Attack because I used to love watching those videos back in the day, back at school and college. Anyway, number 10. This one would come as no surprise to a lot of people who enjoy the DS. This is The World Ends With You, a really, really good JRPG for the system, a really unique graphic style, a really, really unique battle system which uses all of the buttons on the system as well as the touchscreen at the same time, which kind of blew my mind back then. There's so much to take in with this game. It's got a great story, great cast of characters, once again, like a lot of the other games that I've showed off, it's got an amazing soundtrack. The DS has some of my favourite game soundtracks of all time, and The World Ends With You is right up there as one of the best ever. And very recently, I was really excited to see that Square Enix has revealed not just an anime based on the original game, but also 
a complete new sequel on the Switch and I can't wait to play that. And this original game is also out on the Switch right now, but apparently the DS version is still the one to play because of those touchscreen, dual screen mechanics. So I highly recommend this one if you've got a DS. I'm sure if you've got a DS you've already heard and you've probably already got this game, so I don't really need to say that much more about it other than go and play it because it's amazing. Number nine, and this is quite possibly my favorite entry in my favorite game franchise, or at least maybe my top three or four game franchises. This is Tetris DS. What an incredible version of Tetris this is. There's so many different modes, but to be honest, the only mode that I really care about in this is Marathon Mode, and they did it absolutely wonderfully in this game. It has some of the tightest controls in any Tetris game that I've played, but the thing that makes this game stand out amongst all of the other ones is the art style. Yes, I know a lot of people wouldn't really consider the art style a reason to play a Tetris game, but I have to say that my top two Tetris games, this one and Tetris Effect, both stand out for me, not just because they control and play really well, but because they look really unique as well. And this one looks really unique in the fact that they actually used a lot of retro Nintendo style sprites that spin around on the top. They redid all of the background from Nintendo's classic games, which looks really interesting. Like, for example, you've got like actual hills on Mario 1's stage, and there's like a Zelda overworld, and it looks like a proper field and stuff. I just loved the graphic style, and at the time, I really wished that Nintendo would actually release their original games with the sort of backgrounds they had in this. And the game itself is actually a really modern version of Tetris. It's got the hard drop, it's got the hold blocks, it's got T-spins. Everything that you love from modern versions of Tetris is in this game, as well as a load of multiplayer modes. Of course, unfortunately, the online connection for the game no longer works, but you can still link up with a friend. And I think this actually also included download play, so that means you could play with other people but only use one cart, which is really, really good. And that's something I loved doing with the DS in general back at college and uni, is sharing the games with friends even if they didn't own a copy of the game. And I remember I played a lot of this one back then. Number eight, and by far one of my favorite rhythm games of all time. I'm actually including two different games here, even though they're kind of technically the same game, but they've got different soundtracks and different cutscenes. Of course, I'm talking about Elite Beat Agents and Osu, Os Tatakai Oendon. Something like that, I'll put the name up there, I really can't remember the Jap Japanese name for it. Oh, end on, I'll just call it that for now. These two games are absolutely amazing, I think there was a sequel out in Japan as well. And I used to play the PC game, Osu, or Os, a lot back at uni. I really loved that game and I really love this series in general. I'm just going to be talking about the English one now because... Well, this is the easiest one to get, obviously, for a lot of you people watching. Highly recommend this game, and it's dirt cheap as well, and I, it's just so much fun. It's so simple to play, and there's like varying levels of difficulty. I've 100% completed the game on every difficulty setting. I absolutely love it. Even though the soundtrack isn't the best, it's very, very cheesy, but what they did with this game is they matched the music to different stories that different characters have, and basically you play as the Elite Beat Agents, these three guys here, and there's a character that you see their backstory and then they call out for help and they send the Elite Beat agents to help them out in whatever sort of problems they're having in their day-to-day -day lives and it makes for some hilarious moments as well as some really sad moments. If you didn't cry playing this part of the game then you don't have a soul. I remember I was actually playing that one on the bus on the way home from college and I was almost in tears. I had to stop playing, close the DS and then pick it back up at home once I was alone. It really was that sad. I really did shed a tear playing this game and that's just hilarious to think that I cried playing a rhythm game. It's so, so good. It holds a really special place in my heart. And of course, if you can track down the Japanese one, definitely get that as well. I really wish they would make more of these games. I really, really do. Absolutely fantastic. Number seven and another one that I loved playing with my friends at college. This is Advance Wars Dual Strike. The sequel to two of my favourite games of all time, Advance Wars and Black Hole Rising for the GBA. Absolutely love this game, it was a brilliant follow up to those original GBA games. Of course, there was another sequel released a few years later called Dark Conflict in the UK, and I think it had a different name in the US. I didn't like this one quite as much as this. That They went for a really, like, sort of, I would say, more gritty art style. I wouldn't really say realistic because it's still very cartoony, but 
I much prefer the brighter colours and the more fun cast of characters from Dual Strike. Really loved this. It took advantage of the two screens. You could actually have four different factions fighting all at once or you could have air battles in the sky where you had land battles on the screen on the bottom. It introduced some new characters to play as as well as a load of different characters and environments to play in. Some new tanks and new ways of fighting. It was just a fantastic sequel any way you look at it. It didn't reinvent the wheel, it was still very much a traditional Advance Wars game, but they really did perfect the formula with the DS, and it controls really well using the touchscreen to move your units around on the map. I just think they did a great job with it. And I also really loved doing multiplayer on this. I used to love making my own maps and then fighting my friends on my own creations. Of course I gave myself the advantage every time, but they didn't know that. Even so, Advance Wars Dual Strike, highly recommend it. And I'm so sad that Intelligent Systems hasn't gone back to the Advance Wars series since this game, since the DS. So they're now two generations without a single even mention of Advance Wars. It's like Fire Emblem has took over them completely. So please, Intelligent Systems, if you're watching, give us some more Advance Wars. The fans need it. I need it. I would do anything to get a new Advance Wars game. Well, maybe not anything, but I really do want one. Now we're getting into the really good stuff. Honestly, any one of these games could be my number one pick, but I've tried to order them in order so that the one at the bottom is my all-time favourite. So, number six is Dragon Quest Chapters of the Chosen. This was actually the first Dragon Quest game that came out on the DS. They also came out with Dragon Quest V and VI remakes of them. This is a remake of number four, which originally came out on the Famicom. Not the Super Famicom, there was a remake on the Super Famicom as well, I think. But this one was based on the original Famicom game. And it's called Chapters of the Chosen because basically there's four different characters that you play as throughout the journey. And then at the end, much like the recent Switch and PC game now, Octopath Traveler, but obviously cut in half because there's only four rather than eight. But it's really interesting to play through each of the different characters' stories. And then of course they all meet up at the end to be one last big team to go and fight the final dungeon. It's a really good game. It doesn't overstay its welcome, which is something that I feel like some of the later Dragon Quest games did. I think I remember this game being about 40 hours long, which I honestly think is the perfect length for an RPG. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's really well paced. I love the fact that it mixes the game up having all the different characters. I love playing as the merchant. There's a whole part of this game where you're just playing as this guy who runs a shop and it's just it's just so wholesome and fun. I just really love this game. I love everything about it. Definitely my favourite of the three Dragon Quest games that came out on the DS. And quite possibly my favourite Dragon Quest game out of all of them. So that is Dragon Quest IV, Chapters of the Chosen. Now we're into the top five and my number five pick is kind of a recent one that I picked up actually, but it's absolutely fantastic, which I'm sure I've said about all of these games, but I especially mean it about this one. And I am planning, you probably just saw it there, I am planning to do a big video about the entire series. I think you can see there, that's probably giving it away. Of course, I'm talking about Umihara Kawase, which is a really interesting kind of platformer, kind of puzzle game series. This DS one, is a port of the PS1 game and the original Famicom game. Let me just get them down so I can show you. So here they are. There was one game on the Super Famicom, which is still my favourite in the series to this day. And there was two on the PlayStation 1. And I believe the DS game is a mix of this, which is Umihara Kawase Shun 2nd Edition, which included a few extra stages, and the original game here. When you boot the game up, basically you're greeted with a menu and you can either play so-called DS mode, which is basically the PS1 game but shrunk down slightly to fit better on the DS. It includes all the same graphics, all of the same levels as far as I'm aware, and you can also play the original Super Famicom game on the DS as well. And that game is completely intact, it's the entire game. So honestly, I think this is the best game in the entire Umihara Kawase series. And the game itself I'm going to save all of my explanations for the full series video that I've got planned in the near future. But basically you play as this girl here called Yumi and you go around these different levels and you've got a fishing rod that you can use to either reel enemies in to clear out or clear obstacles. And you can also use it to grapple your way around the stages and it's so fun. The physics are really really good and it has a really high skill ceiling so while it's a really simple game to understand concept wise there's a lot of depth behind it in the way that the physics work and the way that you just traverse the environments it's so 
much fun to play and I've got so much more that I want to share about the series and I can't wait to make that full video. Fingers crossed I'll get it done by the end of the year. I've got one more game that I need to get and then I've got all of the games in the series and I can't wait to make a start on it. So before we get down to the last four, I just want to say to everyone who's still watching, thank you so much for sticking with me, I really hope you're enjoying this video. Let me know down in the comments what some of your favourite DS games are. So let's carry on with number four, and there was three of these games for the DS that got released, and I can honestly say that all three of them are amazing, and I could have quite easily picked any of these three games to be my top game. So. It is the Castlevania series, if you hadn't guessed already. So there was three games. The first one was Dawn of Sorrow, then there was Portrait of Ruin, and finally there was Order of Ecclesia. But my personal favourite was the first one, Dawn of Sorrow. I was completely obsessed with this game. To be honest, I was completely obsessed with the other two, and the three on the GBA as well. Honestly, the Castlevania series, especially these Metroidvania ones, are just some of my favourite games of all time and this one is my favourite of the bunch of that style of Castlevania. This one is so good, it takes everything that was great about Aria of Sorrow for the GBA and basically improves upon it in every way possible. It uses the two screens really well, something that I always wished with the GBA ones was that you could see the map at all times. Well thanks to the DS you can now do that because you've got a map on the bottom screen and that just makes exploring so much more fun because you can always tell where you are, you can always tell where you haven't been. I just love that style of game, that Metroidvania style of game. And apart from Super Metroid, I would probably say this is my second favourite Metroidvania out of any Metroidvania. Let me know if you've played the three Castlevania games for the DS. I quite like Portrait of Ruin because it's a little bit faster paced and I really like all of the different combat options and the fact that there's one big town that you go back to and you have a lot of different quests to do in the Order of Ecclesia so that's why I like these two but this one's very much a traditional Metroidvania style. There's nothing really deviating too much but I really do think they perfected it with this game. Now my top three and I could honestly have put these in any order and I'm also pretty sure that this is exactly the same top three that I had in my original video. We'll find out at the end of this because I'm planning to actually watch that one back for the first time in 10 years and maybe do some sort of tally to see how far off I was between the two videos. So in number three I've put Kingdom Hearts 358 over two days. Yes, it's a stupid title, but it's also, believe it or not, my favorite game in the Kingdom Hearts series, and I've played all of the mainline entries and most of the spin-offs, and this one is definitely my favorite. I know a lot of people probably haven't played this game or wrote it off as just a silly spin-off of Kingdom Hearts 2, but I honestly love what they did with the story in this one. My favorite thing about Kingdom Hearts is the Kingdom Hearts story, not so much the Disney stuff, so when I found out that this game mostly centred around Organisation 13 and what happened with Roxas and Xion and the organisation in between 2 and Chain of Memories, I think just after Chain of Memories this one was set, it's just got a really really nice story and at the time the FMV cutscenes blew my mind as well and of course if you've got I think Kingdom Hearts 2.5 on the PS4 you can watch all of the cutscenes from this game in high definition without having to do the game itself. So if you don't feel like playing the DS game but you still feel like getting the amazing Kingdom Hearts story, you can do so on the PS4, I believe. It's on 2.5, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But even so, the ending for this game in particular really, really stuck out to me and it's something I still think about today, almost 10 years later. So you can tell it really held a special place in my heart. And I also loved the mission-based structure of this game. Obviously you're going back to the organisation, you're finding out more about them, you're finding out more about Sora and Roxas and the connection between them, and then you go to all the different Disney lands and do all of the different stories there and how they all link back together. It's just a really well made game in every regard. My favourite game in the Kingdom Hearts series, and if this is your favourite game in the Kingdom Hearts series let me know in the comments, or let me know which ones you do enjoy, this one is definitely my favourite. Now two more. And I love these games so much that now I've got a capture card, I'm actually thinking about doing Let's Plays for both of them. And to be honest, I think they're games that not a lot of people have played, and probably not a lot of people, apart from the guys that follow me on Twitter, I know some of you are expecting to see these. Number two is Time Hollow. 
A game that I really enjoy. It's one of my favourite visual novel style games ever. I love the cast of characters. I love the time travel storyline and the mechanics. If you're going into this game expecting it to be a really in-depth game, then you're going to be disappointed. But if you go in expecting a great gripping story that's not too long, just like Dragon Quest, it doesn't outstay its welcome. It's interesting all the way through. Like I said, it's got a really interesting cast of characters. It's been a long time since I played it, but I know that when I did play it, I felt that immersion that I very rarely feel these days. And it's just a game that absolutely sucked me in. I think I must have played it for like six or seven hours in one go once. I remember just sitting in bed all day, just clicking on the touch screen, clicking through this game, absolutely loving every minute of it. And I can't wait to do a bigger video or maybe even a let's play of this game in the future. If I do a let's play, I'm going to upload it on my second channel called Retro Break Gameplay. So go and subscribe to that if you want to see what Time Hollow is all about because I absolutely love this game and I can't wait to play it again. It's been too long and it's another game like Kingdom Hearts that I always think about and it just I just think about how it made me feel back then and it's got to be a really special game if I still think about it today. And another very special game, this is number one and a very special developer to me as well and it's so sad that they're no longer around. This is another code, Two Memories. One of the very first games that came out for the DS after the launch. I remember reading about it in magazines before it was released and I just thought it sounded fascinating. So I got it on day one, I picked it up and I was so engrossed with it, you have no idea. It's basically mm, kind of a point and click adventure with kind of a mist style feeling to the mystery behind the game. Mixed with a really interesting story of scientists and changing memories and mysteries on a secret island. It's just got everything I loved about stories back then. And if I remember right, the main character in this game was the same age as me. And I could just picture myself being there, going on this adventure. This really, really interesting adventure full of really interesting puzzles. Really interesting locations. Really interesting characters. That's something that I like about a lot of these games. The characters really stand out as someone really special. And this game cemented Sing as one of my favourite developers. Of course, they went on to make two much more popular games for the DS. Hotel Dusk, Room 215 and The Last Window. Again, two amazing games by one of my favourite developers. But I have to give the edge to their first DS release, Another Code, Two Memories. There was also a sequel on the Wii, which is also really good. I don't think that one came out in America, and I think in America this was called Trace Memory. So if you're watching from America, then have a look on eBay for Trace Memory instead. It might be a bit cheaper for you to get the game that way. Highly recommend this game, as well as the other games they've made. They also made a few more for the DS, which unfortunately I don't have, but I'm trying to get. They're in my watch list. One of them's called Again. And there's another one that's like a detective game. And they made one more game on the 3DS. And then they just sort of disbanded. So unfortunately the company is no longer around. But they were amazing for the time. Definitely some of the best storytellers in games. So there we go. That was a very long video. That was my top 15 DS games revisited for 2020. I really hope you enjoyed my picks. Now before I end the video I'm going to take a look at the video I did 10 years ago and see how many of the games I chose in this video match up with the games I did in that one, so let's have a look. Hello Nintendo Wii here. Today I'm going to be doing my top 15 DS games. Thank you all so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite 15 DS games are. It would be really interesting to know how similar or how different my tastes are compared to yours. I would love to know what you guys think. Of course, please subscribe if you enjoyed the episode. Please pledge on Patreon if you really enjoyed the episode and want to see some more behind the scenes looks about how I make all these, how I edit stuff. I've been doing a lot on Patreon recently so I would really appreciate your support over there. That's it for now though, I will be doing more DS videos in the future now i got my capture card. I can't wait to do more, so let me know what kind of videos you guys would like me to do on the DS. Or the 3DS actually, I've got a lot of 3DS games that I would love to talk about as well. So thank you all so much for sticking with me throughout all of this, and I'll see you next week for the next episode. Goodbye!